We are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic sweeping the whole world. Almost no country is being spared. I want to make a contribution to make this uh, easier in terms of the people who are managing this situation at the government level and at the uh, healthcare services level. We need to identify the most vulnerable uh, group of people in a general population that uh, are, are likely to get this infection. And of course, there are so many imponderables, but there are few, at least two very specific things which we can look for in identifying people who are most susceptible to this infection. Based on the clinical research that me and my team pursues in probably one of the largest healthcare services uh, operation and clinical research and fundamental research in medicine operation, uh, uh, I wanted to make some observations. And, and I'm doing that because based on all the information I have seen, there seems to be a very major blind spot for uh, all the policies. The most vulnerable groups being thought of are very generalistic things, old people and people with comorbidities and other things. Comorbidities being discussed are like diabetes, hypertension, etc. But what has not been discussed at all are one of the largest communities of people who are susceptible. This is the people, the patients who are having an autoimmune disease and are under the treatment of state-of-the-art modern medicine. So this is a very large community of people, millions and millions of people suffering from autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylosis, Crohn's disease, interstitial lung disease and so on. So these patients are being treated using a group of drugs called immunosuppressants. I am talking about steroids, I am talking about chemotherapy medicines such as methotrexate, I am talking about more specific immunosuppressants such as Azoran, Cellcept, MMF. So these immunosuppressants that are being given with the objective of deliberately shutting down the immune systems of these people. This makes them the most vulnerable community of people to an infection such as COVID-19. So their immune system is effectively shut down by modern medicine. So if we are to do testing of a group of people, let's say in a large group of people, of people who have traveled in the same plane, 400 people, or people who have been in a closed concert hall with 1000 people, 1500 people, whom do you test first? Or in a large city such as New York, which is being, you know, emergency measures are being put in place. So whom do you test first? Are we just going to randomly go and test 1 million people? We cannot do that. We should first test those people who are on steroids, chemotherapy drugs and other immunosuppressants. This is a very, very essential blind spot, I believe. Uh, that has not been addressed in any of the government communications. The second group are those people who have elevated serum IgE levels. So those who have already been tested in the past for whatever reason, for allergies basically, all the allergic, allergic rhinitis, allergic asthma, sinusitis, anything. They are also the second group of people who are most likely to contract such an infection. We can prioritize those. And of course, the third group would be people who have already uh, have had cancer and they have been put through strong chemotherapies and steroids, which are immunosuppressants. So these three groups, one, the millions and millions of people who have been uh, given immunosuppressants to deliberately shut down their immune system, they are the most vulnerable. Second is those with elevated serum Ig levels. And that means they are uh, having some allergies, uh, any kind of 
allergies for which they are having elevated serum IG levels and third group would be the people that, who have uh, been diagnosed with malignancy and have undergone or started undergoing chemotherapies. This video is meant for policy makers and this is my view based on 25 years of clinical experience and in research in medicine. I believe this should help uh, in rationalizing the use of resources, testing or treatment or containment, whichever way we want to look at it. Thank you everyone.